The one who used to be Bugsy. After what had happened with Scarecrow and Invisible Custodian, Leo was braced for Bugsy's stage to be totally different when he and Balin arrived. Even then, he was still caught off guard by just how much it had changed. The once sun-dappled woods were now shrouded in midnight darkness. The only light came from some glowing mushrooms, and even that was barely enough to see their surroundings. The aroma shrooms were still there. They made Leo remember how cute Clock Tower Kid had been when she had shown him why she'd called them that. Without thinking, he leaned over to brush his fingers against one. It belched out a cloud of toxic-looking purple spores that made Leo sputter and gag. Balin chortled. Oh here, it slipped my mind to warn you touching those aroma shrooms you really ought not to do. You think? Experience really is the best teacher, you see. You've a lot of lessons yet to learn, but not from me, said Balin, and disappeared. Normally, you learn the lessons before you get tested on them, Leo shouted after the man's vanishing form. Grumbling, Leo turned away to get his bearings. Now that he was getting a better look, he could see spider webs everywhere. But these were not the lovely webs from before that melted like snow under his touch. The strands were as thick and tough as wire, meant to ensnare any invading enemy. Leo was wondering how he was going to get through them when Bugsy's illusion appeared. All around her flitted the one insect that had never been on her stage before. Butterflies. I wonder what happened to her in the real world that makes butterflies so significant. The ones fluttering around the illusion were white, glowy little things that made it impossible to tell what kind they were. What's the deal? Bugsy's illusion had a terrible, lonely expression on her face that Leo took to mean, in her heart of hearts, she wanted to be rescued. Then let me help you. Leo drew on Bugsy's imagination and donned a new costume. Web Wrangler, it was called, and every aspect looked inspired by the eight-legged silk weavers. He took hold of one of the webs and tested his weight on it. The fat, thick strands held him up no problem. The wall that Bugsy had created to protect her stage from invaders was now Leo's way inside. He traveled quickly through the woods, locating the first heart tree. The Tims slammed into it, using their power to dispel the negative force field encircling the arbor. Thanks again, Leo said to the Tims, taking hold of the fragment of Bugsy's heart. As soon as he touched it, he knew this was the part of her that loved taking care of little creatures. That would be a hobby of hers. And it probably wasn't just any little creature, but butterflies in particular. But Bugsy had thrown this part of herself away and was cocooned in negativity. I gotta get this back to her ASAP. Street Beat Leo made his way through the stage, fighting Nagati every step of the way. Illusion Bugsy helped him find the second heart tree, where he rescued the second fragment of her heart, the strong part of her that did not care a single bit about what other people thought of her. Which means she started caring about what someone thought, but who? He had no idea how this was related to the part of her that loved caring for little creatures, but he figured he would find out when he found her. He could try asking the Illusion her, but something told him she wouldn't have any answers for him. It wasn't much longer until he found where the real Bugsy had shut herself away. I wonder what she transformed into. Both Scarecrow and Invisible Custodian had become warped by the darkness in their hearts. Leo thought of Clock Tower Kid's monstrous metamorphosis and felt a stab of sadness in his chest. Something made him look up at the sky just as a huge, grotesque monster came swooping down. It looked like a butterfly, spider, and praying mantis had all been rolled into one, a fearsome creature that was nothing like the timid girl Leo remembered. I can't believe that's really her. Her name had changed too, just like the others. This monster was not Bugsy, but Wormsworth. Leo barely picked his jaw up off the ground in time to avoid her merciless attacks. Her raptorial forelegs stabbed down at him, but his dance training meant he could spin away from her faster than she could strike. He spun and lunged out of her reach. Eventually, the monster seemed to realize these attacks were not getting her anywhere, so she backed away and sat stock still. Thinking Wormsworth could no longer reach him from there, Leo relaxed a little bit. He knew who she was at her core under all that monster, a sweet, gentle girl who would never hurt a fly, but it was a mistake to let his guard down. He yelled in shock as her sickle-like forearms detached themselves from her body and flew right at him like sharp, spiky boomerangs. 
they tore great gashes through his costume. Should have known better. Names in Wonderworld, he realized, noted a person or thing's true nature. The thing he was fighting wasn't the shy, gentle girl he knew. I can't even feel a flicker of her in there. Leo inched closer and closer to her as they fought, closing the distance with every move. At last, he saw his chance and shot the fragments of Bugsy's heart into Lance's mark. Wormsworth's shriek pierced the air. Leo clapped his hands over his ears and squeezed his eyes shut. When he opened them again, he saw Bugsy, returned to her human form. She stood with her back to him. He made his way over to try and talk to her, but she turned her face away. Don't look at me. I can't believe I've turned into something so, so awful. That wasn't really you, Bugsy. Don't be ashamed. His encouragement did not seem to reach her. She hung her head. I'm really sorry. Seriously, you don't have to apologize for being manipulated by your negativity. But I was wondering, why'd you go into the Ballon Theater in the first place? She was quiet for a few moments, and then continued in a halting voice. We were studying butterflies at school, so I brought in some caterpillars that I'd found around my neighborhood. All of my classmates thought they were gross, but they helped me look after them. At first, anyway. A couple of them stopped helping, until eventually it was just me. It's not like caterpillars are my favorite thing in the whole world, but without me taking care of them, they'd die. That's rough. Though I had no choice but to look after them. There are a bunch of different kinds, but the one that gave me the most trouble was the lantern fritillary. That species lives high up in the mountains and can only eat mugwort, which didn't grow anywhere near where I lived. I had to wake up before dawn and head way out of town to find it. And because I worked so hard to take care of them, my classmates started calling me horrible things like caterpillar nerd behind my back. I hated it. I didn't care what happened to the caterpillars anymore. And that's when I came across the Ballon Theater. That explained why she had gotten rid of the parts of her that loved little creatures and no longer cared what anyone else thought. You're incredible, said Leo. Bugsy shook her head. No, I'm not. I don't want to take care of those dumb caterpillars anymore. I don't want to see my classmates ever again. He remembered how there hadn't been any other people on her stage when they'd met. Maybe she couldn't stand the sight of anyone except the friends she had made in Wonderworld. The wriggling thing that was coming to eat you, said Leo, the pieces clicking together in his mind. That must have been the lantern caterpillar you'd been taking care of. You must have been so worried about it getting food that you'd started seeing it in your vision. He placed a hand on her shoulder. Help me take down Lance. Then we can leave Wonderworld and you can get back to raising your butterflies. Bugsy only shook her head. Then Balin was there beside Leo, sighing. She can't help us on our mission. Not in this condition. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed that chapter in the Battle and Wonderworld series. I'll be posting the next chapter soon. Now for some photo mode screenshots from the community. At the end of each of my Battle and Wonderworld videos, I like to share a few screenshots that you tag me in. To participate, just use the hashtag UnbrokenWonderworld on Twitter with some of your screenshots and I'll pick a few to show at the end of my next video. The first one we have this week is from user Zavrik2. Here we have Lance looking pretty scared as he's about to be blasted with a giant ball of energy. Makes me really think a lot of the battles in Dragon Ball Z. Next up, we have one from ToastFan95. We've got great use of the photo frames in this super colorful shot of the rail runner speeding along a track. Really cool shot. Last one for this week is from Cobalt Crusade. Getting a rare look behind the scenes, Attilio sitting in his change room with Balan looking onward. This looks like a shot straight out of a movie set and just seems really powerful. Thanks again to everyone for participating and watching. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date on all my videos. And as always, happy gaming.